Today you will learn how to use queries in Firestore. Welcome back to another episode in our Firestore, Firebase and React playlist. Today we're going to learn how to query data from Firestore, so that means sort and filter data from Firestore. The three main methods here are the WHERE method, the ORDER BY method and the LIMIT method. At the end of the day it's not really difficult, but you need to know a couple of quirks to make it work. So let's right, get into it. Here I have a new component which is called Snapshot Firebase Advanced JS. It's almost the same like Snapshot Firebase that you already know from previous videos. If you haven't seen previous videos, it's not really too important that you have seen them if you're just interested in seeing how queries work. So I'm going quickly through what's actually happening here in the component. So first of all, we import everything we need. Then what changed before is we import current user from the auth context. Then we create a variable current user ID. We will use that afterwards in our queries. Then we have our React hooks here. I added a score state, which is also represented in our layout. So here we have the score field where we can add a score to our school. And then here the score will be displayed. We also have now the display of who actually created that listing. So back in our component here, we reference to the Firebase Firestore collection. Then we have the get function. In the use effect, we call get schools. Then we have the add schools function, the delete schools function, and the edit schools function. And of course, here's the return statement, which at the end of the day is what you can see here. What I changed from last time, when we click on the buttons here, the object is not directly created here. So before we did it this way, we created the object right down here. But what we do right now is if we, let's say, go to edit school, we create the object up here. But don't worry about that right now. I'm going to explain it better in the add school method. So here we create a variable which is called owner. So if you have a current user that comes from up here, so from our user context, then we will set owner to the current user dot user ID. And if we don't have a current user, we will just reference unknown. Then the same with the owner email. If you have a current user, then we will reference the email of the current user. Otherwise, we will just reference again unknown. Then before we just had the object like this, just the title, the description and the ID. And now we added score, which takes score from the use state hook, which is set here in this input. And this will give us back a string type. And in JavaScript, we can add this plus symbol before the variable to convert a string type into a number type. And then the other two properties are owner and the owner email, which we reference from up here. So this will be our new school object, which we then put into our set method to create a new listing in our Firebase database. So now our object looks like this. We have a description, ID, an owner, an owner email, a score and a title. And then the last thing that changed is if we edit, we don't edit the description anymore like before, but we edit the score. So let's go here and add a new score, a new title. The title won't change, but just to show you what's actually gonna happen if we add a title and description. If you add a score here, this should change to four. And it does. So that was it about how the whole thing works. So as always, don't forget, if you wanna find the code, the link to the GitHub repo is in the description down below. So let's start with the query. How you can do this is here, after where we reference the collection from Firebase Firestore, we can add a method that's called dot where and prepend it before on snapshot. All the methods we're going to talk about today, which are where, order by, and limit, work with on snapshot and also the get method for Firebase. So let's filter all the results where the score is below 8. Just to recap, we have score 4, 3, 4, 5, 2, 2, 4, and 10. So this should be filtered out. So let's remember school 5. And then we add here where score in parentheses, comma is less than, and this needs to be also in parentheses, 8. And because 8 is a number, because you remember we have type number here, because we added the plus symbol here, we can leave it without parentheses. If it would be a string, we would need to wrap this in parentheses. So let's save that. And if you go to the page now, we shouldn't see school five. So we can only see schools that have a rating of less than eight. 
So that's great. Another use case which we have often is that we only want to see elements that are owned by our current user. So we can do it like this. We reference the elements where the owner, which again we set here to be the current user ID. So in Firebase Firestore, it is this string which comes from the authentication. So if that equals the current user ID, which comes from up here, which is referenced from our auth context, so from our real current user, then the elements will be returned down here. Again, if this might be confusing where the auth and the authentication actually come from, make sure to watch the video about authentication in this playlist. The playlist will be linked down in the description. So let's save that. And if you go back to our app, we are logged in as jim at gmail.com and we can see only the schools that jim at gmail.com is the owner of will be returned here. What we can also do is append different filters, so different where methods after each other. So if you want to have just the owner's data and just the results that have a score less than eight, we can just append another where method. Let's save that, go back to our app and we can see it doesn't work and we get an error here. So sometimes Firebase needs to create a special index for the query you do. So what you can do is only click on this link and it will be redirected to the Google Cloud platform, which your Firebase Firestore is automatically a project of. So let's go back here and we can see that Firebase or rather Google Cloud wants to create a composite index. And sometimes Google Cloud Platform does that and other times it's not required. But at the end of the day, it's quite easy. We just create. And then we have to wait a little. It usually takes a minute or two, especially depending on the size of your current database. And then the index is created and we can use this query in our application. All right, I waited about three minutes and the index has been created. So let's try that again. Let's refresh. And we can see it works. So let's add sorting to our application. Let's sort the results by score. So let's comment that out. And the method we're going to use here is order by score in parentheses and then descending. If you want to have it ascending, we change that to ASC. Let's save that. Go to the application. And we can see we have an ascending list of our schools. Let's change that to descending just to have a look. And now we have it descending. So what will happen if we change that again to see only the listings we are the owner of? So we can see it doesn't work and we get this error again that an index has to be created. And that's the thing with the Firestore queries, which sometimes are annoying that you have to create an index sometimes when you have a compound query. I prepared a little example to show you that it doesn't always happen, but I would say in my experience, it happens most of the time you have a compound query. So for example, if we append this where method where the title is equal to school one, this doesn't need a special index. So if we save that, we can see it still works. But if you comment that out and append this one, and keep in mind, I deleted the index we created before. So this is just back to the beginning. If we save it now, we can see we would need to create an index. But at the end of the day, you don't really have to worry about where does an index need to be created and where not, because you just see this error message and you can create it if you click on the link here. So the last thing I'm gonna have a look at is the limit method. So if we delete all of that and append dot limit, we can add a number here and this limits our query to just three elements. If you want to have five, we just change that and it should give us back five elements. Now, of course, what we can do is append a lot of these queries. So for example, like this, where the owner is the current user, the title is the school ID, the score is less than eight and it's ordered by the score in an ascending order. And then we limit the results to three. Let's save that. And of course, we would now need to create a special index, but that's how you see how you could technically do that. So should you do it this way? Of course, this is in your own opinion. So whatever is best for your application. So I would say if you have a very rigid application and you already know what the queries exactly will be, performance wise, it will make sense to do something like this on the database query side. 
If you have a more flexible application or a dynamic query, I would use as few as possible queries, for example, choose something like this, where the owner is the current user, and then filter, sort, and limit the elements client-side. If you do it client-side, you're a little bit more flexible and you don't have to always create an index when you change something. So especially if you develop anything, it might make sense to filter and sort it client-wise. And afterwards, when it's established, what you're actually going to do, you can performance optimize and do it with the database queries instead of doing it client-wise. All right, this is already it. The next video will be about Firestore safety rules, where we will work closely with the queries. So don't forget to subscribe to not miss that. If you like the video, I will always appreciate a like. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. See you in the next video.